Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about IL-6 test and its significance. What is IL-6? IL-6 is the interleukin-6 which is a cytokine that is going to be released during the immune response and this IL-6 is responsible for the development of acute phase response. This acute phase response leads to systemic inflammation. So IL-6 acts as a marker for inflammation. During the immune response, three important cytokines are going to be released which can develop the inflammatory cascade. The first one is the IL-1, interleukin-1, which is actually responsible for development of hyperthermia, that is fever. And second one is the IL-6, which plays a key role in the inflammatory cascade. And third one is the TNF-alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha. These three cytokines play a crucial role in the immune response and they are pro-inflammatory mediators. So today in this video, we are going to discuss about the role of IL-6 during the inflammation and in which conditions it is elevated and how it is detected and what are the normal values. When IL-6 is elevated, as we have discussed earlier, the elevation of IL-6 levels is associated with the immune response. So in case of any systemic infection, it can lead to the stimulation of immunity so that the T-cells are going to be stimulated. And these T-cells can release few of the mediators which produce the systemic inflammation. Similarly, in few of the conditions like the autoimmune disorders, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, and SLE, systemic leopus erythematosus. Again, there is an auto simulation of the T cells which enhance the inflammatory response, resulting in the systemic inflammation. Similarly, if you have the cardiovascular disorders, for example, cardiac cells are damaged. In the cardiac damage, such as congestive heart failure or any associated conditions like the stroke, again, in such conditions, we can observe an increased in inflammation within the body. And not only these conditions, if you have the chronic disorders like the cancer, within the microenvironment of the cancerous cells, inflammatory mediators are going to be released, which results in the systemic inflammation. So all these conditions are associated with the inflammation where the IL-6 levels are elevated within the plasma. So it can also be elevated in few of the inflammatory conditions like asthma, inflammatory bowel disorder, so wherever there is a systemic inflammation, there may be an elevated levels of IL-6, which indicates the severity of the inflammation within the body. Now let us see how it is released. One of the important stimulation for the IL-6 release is the immune response. So whenever a viral infection or any other type of infection, they inject few of the foreign bodies which are acting like antigens. These antigens can be recognized by few of the cells which are called as APC, antigen presenting cells. So these antigens can bind to this APC and once they are bound to APC, the antigen presenting cell can digest these antigens resulting in the fragments of the antigen. These fragments are represented by one of the expression molecules which call MHC2, major histocompatibility 2 complex. Now these Fragments of the antigen can be presented by MHC2 molecules, which are recognized by CD4 T cells. In this way, the antigen can stimulate the T cell activation and these CD4 T cells can release one of the important mediator IL-2, interleukin-2. Now this IL-2 can stimulate and promote the T helper lymphocyte 0. This T helper lymphocyte 0 can be split into two components by various types of other cytokines. One of the wing is the activation of Th2 lymphocytes. These Th2 lymphocytes can activate the B cells and these B cells are converted into plasma cells which release the IgG antibodies. In this way, whenever antigen is presented, the immune response is going to be stimulated to release the antibodies against this antigen. At the same time, this Th0 lymphocytes can also be converted into Th1 lymphocytes, which are going to release the memory B cells. These memory B cells will capture the memory of antigen and they can release the antibodies within the future whenever the host is injected with these antigens. 
So this is the one division of immune response where the CD4 T cells are activated to release the specific antibodies. So during this immune response from the TH0 lymphocytes, one of the mediator is going to be released that is the IL-6. Along with the other cytokines, IL-6 is also released. But the elevated levels of IL-6 indicates there is an enhanced immune response and progressive inflammation within the body. That's why IL-6 acts as a biomarker for inflammation. And based on the elevated levels of IL-6, we can assess the severity of the infection as well as inflammation within the body. But generally the IL-6 can be released from the monocytes as well as macrophages as well as T cells and even from the endothelial cells. All these are going to release the IL-6 which is responsible for the development of acute phase response. This acute phase response involves the release of further mediators which produce systemic inflammation. Now the IL-6 which is going to be released can lead to the acute phase response. One of the primary target of the IL-6 is the hepatocytes. From the liver, IL-6 can stimulate the release of few of the mediators like one of the important mediator is the CRP, C-reactive protein. Similarly, it can stimulate the release of another protein, serum amyloid A. And it can also release the fibrinogen which is responsible for the clotting process. In this way, IL-6 can release the inflammatory mediators which are responsible for the acute phase response. That's why whenever IL-6 levels are elevated, most of the times it is associated with the elevated levels of the CRP. So there is an association between the IL-6 and CRP levels within the body. Whenever IL-6 levels are elevated, CRP levels are also elevated. That's why IL-6 along with the CRP can act as a biomarker for systemic inflammation. How IL-6 test is done? This test is done by collection of the blood from the veins and the blood is going to be collected in the test tube which is coated with the EDTA such that we can inhibit the coagulation and separate the plasma. But after the collection of the blood sample, it should be immediately centrifuged so that the plasma can be separated. The superintendent liquid is the plasma which is uh, stored for the annals of the IL-6. Here one of the interesting point is that the centrifugation should be done within 30 minutes after the collection of the blood sample. So if the plasma is separated after 30 minutes, it may result in the analytical errors in the IL-6 test. Once plasma is going to be separated, it should be immediately refrigerated and better it should be stored in a frozen form. And the freezing of the sample should be done within 24 hours in order to eliminate the pre-analytical errors. What are the normal values? Generally, IL-6 is not significantly detected within the systemic circulation. That's why normal levels of IL-6 can be considered as 0.0 to 7.0 nanogram per ml. But generally, the normal level can also be considered up to 18 nanogram per ml. So there will be a slight variability in the normal levels according to the analysis. Up to the 18 nanogram per ml, it can be considered as a normal level. But sometimes the slight elevation of IL-6 values may not be correlated with the systemic inflammation. So always IL-6 levels should be correlated with the clinical symptoms within the patient. That's why in few of the studies, a cutoff value is going to be given to the IL-6 value. Generally, the cutoff value is considered at 80 nanogram per ml. So this cutoff value indicates a severity of inflammation. So whenever this IL-6 value is greater than 80 nanogram per ml, it indicates a progressive inflammation which should be immediately treated. What are the limitations of the IL-6 test? The IL-6 is having very less stability and because of this, it should be immediately centrifuged after the collection of the sample. Within 30 minutes, the plasma should be separated and immediately should be refrigerated. Otherwise, the sample should be frozen and freezing of the sample should be done within 24 hours after the collection. If these precautions are not followed, it results in the error within the IL-6 test. So errors are possible due to improper collection and preservation. So this is one of the important limitations of the IL-6 test. And second important limitation is that this IL-6 is not a specific biomarker for the inflammation. 
even it indicates the inflammation within the body but it is not indicating a particular type of inflammation whether it is an autoimmune disorder or infection sepsis or cancer in all these conditions igl6 may be elevated so it will not specify a particular type of inflammatory response within the body so generally an elevated levels of igl6 indicate a inflammatory response which should be compared with the other biomarkers in order to identify a specific inflammatory disorder for example in the immune response the il6 levels are elevated along with the elevated levels of crp similarly whenever il6 levels are normal we cannot rule out the inflammation because sometimes even il6 levels are normal other inflammatory biomarkers may be elevated which indicates the inflammation within the patient so these are the limitations of the il6 test but apart from these limitations il6 plays a crucial role in assessment of severity of inflammation so elevated levels of il6 indicates a progressive inflammation which gives an early sign to control the inflammation for instance in the covid-19 the immune response is going to be stimulated which results in the release of the cytokines these cytokines may result in the cytokine storm where excessive stimulation of t cells along with the release of cytokines may result in the systemic inflammation in such conditions the elevated levels of il6 can be recognized within the patient which should be controlled in order to prevent the further progression of the inflammation so that's about this il6 test that's for today we will come with another interesting test in our next video thank you for watching this video